This is the story of Shri Krishna, of the restoration of Dharma and the defeat of evil in man. On the field of truth, on the battlefield of life, stood two opposing armies, the forces of Dharma, the Pandavas, and their arrogant cousins, the Kauravas. Between the two, a single chariot, where the great warrior Arjuna turned to Sri Krishna, the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu, and said, I will not fight Krishna. Arjuna, seeing in both armies fathers and grandfathers, sons and grandsons, uncles, masters, brothers and friends, put down his bow and arrows. And overcome with despair and grief continued, I cannot foresee any glory in killing my own kinsmen in battle. Then arose the spirit of Sri Krishna and spoke to his friend Arjuna. Thy tears are for those beyond tears. Are thy words words of wisdom? The wise grieve not for those who live, and they grieve not for those who die, for life and death shall pass away. If any man thinks he slays, or another thinks he is slain, neither knows the way of truth. The eternal in man cannot kill, and the eternal in man cannot die. As a man leaves his old garment and puts on one that is new, so the spirit changes its mortal body. beyond the power of sword and fire, beyond the power of water and wind. The Spirit is omnipresent, never changing, never moving, ever one. Think thou therefore of thy duty, and do not waver. Have peace in thy soul, and seek joy in the silence of the Spirit, Then Arjuna said, My mind is restless. How can I know peace? Sri Krishna replied, When a man surrenders all desires that come into his heart, and by the grace of God finds the joy of God, then his soul has indeed found peace. He whose mind is untroubled by sorrow has no longing for pleasure, 
and is beyond passion, fear, and anger, who is everywhere free from all ties, who neither rejoices nor sorrows whether fortune be ill or good. He is indeed a yogi. When a man dwells on the pleasures of sense, attraction for them arises in him. From attraction arises desire, the lust of possession. And this leads to passion, to anger. From passion comes confusion of the mind, then loss of remembrance, the forgetting of duty. From this loss comes the ruin of reason, and the ruin of reason leads man to his destruction. For when the mind becomes bound by the passion of the wandering senses, this passion carries away man's wisdom, even as the wind drives a vessel on the waves. But the soul that moves in the world of the senses and yet keeps those senses in harmony, free from attraction, and aversion, finds rest in the silence of the spirit. For in this silence all sorrow falls away. There is no wisdom for a man without harmony, and without harmony there is no contemplation. Without contemplation there cannot be peace. And without peace, there cannot be joy. For the man who forsakes all desires and abandons all pride of possessions and of self reaches the goal of peace supreme. This is the eternal in man, O Arjuna. Reaching him, all delusion is gone. Even in the last hour of his life upon earth, man can reach the nirvana of Brahman. Man can find peace in the peace of his God. But Krishna, spoke Arjuna, by what path may I attain the Supreme? Sri Krishna replied, There is a path of wisdom and a path of action. But not by refraining from action does man achieve freedom from action. <laughs> not by mere renunciation does he attain perfection. Not even for a moment can a man be without action, since he who withdraws from action merely ponders on his pleasures. Therefore, perform thy task in life, for action is greater than inaction, but be detached from its fruit. Let your actions be pure, free from the bonds of desire and reward, for he who through inner yoga finds the joy of the spirit, satisfaction, and peace, goes beyond what is done and what is not done, and is free from the laws of action. Even a wise man acts under the impulse of his nature. All beings follow nature. Yet the man lost in selfish delusion thinks himself the actor and the doer. Offer to me 
all thy work. Set thy mind on the supreme. Be free from vain hopes and selfish thoughts. And with inner peace, fight thou thy fight. Yet Arjuna's mind remained restless. What causes man to act sinfully, even unwillingly, as if powerless? All is clouded by desire, which in its innumerable forms, like a fire, can never find satisfaction. Desire and hate, born of passion, have found their place in man's mind, senses and reason, forever clouding his wisdom. Therefore set thou thy senses in harmony and slay thou the enemies of wisdom. They say that the power of the senses is great. But greater than the senses is the mind. Greater than the mind is reason. And greater than reason is he, the spirit in man and in all. Know him therefore who is above reason and let his peace give thee peace. Be a warrior and kill impure desire, the powerful enemy of the soul. Sri Krishna continued, I have been born many times, Arjuna, and many times hast thou been born. But I remember my past lives, and thou hast forgotten thine. Although I am unborn, everlasting, and the Lord of all, whenever, O sign of Bharata, Dharma declines and evil prevails, I incarnate myself. In whatever way men may love me, in that same way will they find my love. For many are the paths of men, but all in the end shall come to me. Those who lust for earthly power pray to the gods of the earth and through their work receive their earthly reward according to the laws of nature, the laws of karma, of cause and effect, that govern the paths of men's work, and by whose measure, through greed and selfish desire, cloud the inner vision of the spirit. Therefore go beyond the dualism of this world, and even in success or failure, be one in self-harmony. For he who in all his works sees God, in truth goes unto God. God is his worship. God is his offering. Offered by God in the fire of God. Some, faithful to austere vows, offer their wealth as sacrifice, or their penance, or their practice of yoga, or their sacred studies, or their knowledge. Some offer their outflowing breath into the breath that flows in and the inflowing breath into the breath that flows out. Others practice abstinence. All of these know sacrifice and through sacrifice purify their sins. Thus in many ways men sacrifice and in many ways they go to Brahman. But greater than any earthly sacrifice is the sacrifice of sacred wisdom. For wisdom is in truth the end of all holy work. When wisdom is thine, Arjuna, never more shalt thou be in confusion. For thou shalt see in all things thy heart, and thou shalt see thy heart in me. 
And even if thou wert the greatest of sinners, with the help of wisdom, thou shalt cross the sea of evil. Therefore, with the sword of wisdom, kill thou the doubt born of ignorance, and in the fire of all truth burn to ashes all evil. Be one in self-realization, in yoga. See in me all things, and behold all things in me. And arise, great warrior, arise. Arjuna then asked, Renunciation is praised by the Krishna, and then the yoga of holy work. Of these two, tell me in truth, which is the higher path? He who gives all his soul to one, reaches the end of the two. Because the victory won by the man of wisdom is also won by the man of good action. But true renunciation, Arjuna, is difficult to obtain without the yoga of work. 
No work stains a man who is pure, who is in harmony, who is the master of his life, whose soul is one with the soul of all. I'm not doing any work, says the man who is in harmony, who knows the truth. For in seeing or hearing, smelling or touching, in eating or walking, or sleeping or breathing, in talking, even in opening and closing his eyes, he remembers. It is the servants of my soul that are working. Offer all thy works to God. Throw off all selfish attachments and do thy work. No sin can stain thee, even as the waters do not stain the leaf of the lotus. Since the Lord of the world is beyond the works of the world, their working, and beyond the results of these works. But the work of nature rolls on. The evil work or the good work of man belong not to him, since man himself chooses the heaven of his desires. Therefore the wise surrender to him their good work. Their thoughts are on him, and in him they abide. For he is the end of all their journey, and they reach the land of never returning, because their wisdom has made them pure of sin. With the same evenness of love, they behold a Brahmin who is learned and holy, or a cow, or an elephant, or a dog, and even the man who eats the dog. He whose mind is ever serene, who sees Brahman in all, abides in Brahman. Gone is his delusion. When pleasure comes, he is not shaken. And when pain comes, he trembles not. For pleasures that come from the world bear in them the sorrows to come. They are transient. Not in them do the wise seek joy. But he who on this earth can endure the storms of desire and wrath, this man is indeed a yogi. The peace of God resides with those who rest their inner gaze at the Sahasrara. Such a man, with his mind in harmony and free from desire or fear, through silent awareness attains true freedom. He knows me, the God of the worlds, who accepts the offerings of men, the God who is the friend of all. He knows me, and he attains peace. He who works not for an earthly reward, but does the work to be done, he is a yogi, and having surrendered his earthly will, reaches the height of yoga. Arise, therefore, and with the help of thy soul become thou the spirit. Allow not thy soul to fall, for thy soul can be thy friend, and thy soul can be thy enemy. Therefore master thy soul, since he whose soul is in peace is in God, in cold or in heat, in pleasure or in pain, in glory or in disgrace, he is ever in him. Day after day let the yogi practice harmony of the soul. 
a harmony in eating and resting, in sleeping and in working, a perfection whatever he does. For this is the yoga that gives peace. For when in thoughtless awareness the soul achieves the joy of eternity through the grace of the Spirit, and therein the yogi abides and moves not from the fire of its truth, He sees himself in the heart of all beings, and he sees all beings in his heart. This is the vision of the yoga of harmony, a vision that is ever one. He who in this oneness of love loves me in whatever he sees, wherever this man may live, in truth, this man lives in me. Arjuna then asked, Thou hast told me of the yoga of constant oneness, O Krishna. But the mind is inconstant and restless. What if a man strives and fails to reach the end of yoga, yet this man has faith? What is his end, O Krishna? The mind is indeed restless, Arjuna. But by constant practice, the mind can be trained. And the man who is good, it fails to obtain the eternal wisdom, never treads the path of the dead. He dwells for innumerable years in the heaven of those who did good, and is born again in the house of the good. He may even be born into a house of yogis, whose wisdom is great, but this is a rare event. And he begins his new life with the wisdom of a former life, and he begins to strive again ever onwards towards perfection. And thus the yogi, ever striving, attains perfection through many lives. Therefore become thou a yogi, Arjuna, because the yogi goes beyond the paths of austerity, wisdom and work. And the greatest of all yogis is he who with all his soul has faith, who with all his soul loves me. Now, Arjuna, I will speak to thee of that wisdom and vision which, when known, there is nothing else for thee to know. Among thousands of men, perhaps one strives for perfection. And among thousands of those who strive, perhaps one knows me in truth. The visible forms of my nature are eight. Earth, Water, fire, air, ether, the mind, reason, and the sense of I. But beyond my visible nature is my invisible spirit. This is the fountain of life, whereby the universe has its being. All things have their life in this life, and I am their beginning and end. In this whole vast universe there is nothing higher than I. All the worlds have their rest in me, as many pearls on a string. I am the taste of the living waters, and the light of the sun. I am the Omkara, the sacred sound in silence, and the bliss of meditation am I. 
I am the fragrance of the earth and the life of all living beings, the intelligence of the intelligent, the beauty of the beautiful, and the power of the strong when it is free from passion and selfish desires. I am the pure desire of union with the eternal truth that resides beyond the three gunas, past, present and future, yet in whom they reside. Men who seek evil seek not me. Their soul is darkened by delusion. Their vision is veiled by the cloud of appearance. And their heart has chosen the path of evil. Many are the ways of the good, Arjuna. But the man of vision is the greatest. For he who is ever one loves the one. And I am his path supreme. At the end of many lives, the man of vision comes to me. God is all, this great man says. Such a spirit sublime. How rarely is he found. Men whose desires have clouded their vision give their love to the gods. And led by their selfish natures, follow many other paths. For those who love the gods, go to the gods. But those who love me, come unto me. The unwise think that I am that form of my lower nature, which is seen by mortal eyes. <laughs> they know not my higher nature, imperishable and supreme. For my glory is not seen by all. I am hidden by the veil of mystery. I know all that was or is to come, I deny. But no one in truth knows me.
Then Arjuna asked, Who is Brahman? Who is Atman? What is Karma and the Spirit Supreme? What is the kingdom of the earth? And what is the kingdom of light? Sri Krishna answered, Brahman is the Supreme, the Eternal. Atman is his spirit in man. Karma is the force of creation from where all things have their life. Matter is the kingdom of the earth, which in time passes away. But the spirit is the kingdom of life. And he who at the end of time leaves his body thinking of me, he in truth comes to me. Think of me, therefore, at all times, and fight thy fight. For all the world shall pass away, even the world of Brahma, the Creator. They pass away and return. But he who comes unto me goes no more from death to death. Beyond this creation, visible and invisible, there is an invisible, higher, eternal. And when all things pass away, this remains forever and ever. This Spirit Supreme, Arjuna, is attained by an ever-living love. There are two paths that are forever the path of light and the path of darkness. The one leads to the land of never returning. The other returns to sorrow. The yogi who knows these two paths lives never more in delusion, since he who knows the truth of light and darkness attains in me his everlasting home. Therefore, Arjuna, evermore be thou one in yoga. I will tell thee a supreme mystery because thy soul has faith. All this visible universe comes from my invisible being. All beings have their rest in me, but I have not my rest in them, and in truth they rest not in me. Consider my sacred mystery. I am the source of all beings. I support them all but I rest not in them. Thus through my nature I bring forth all creation, but I am not bound by this creation. I am the silent witness of the drama of the universe. But the fools of this world see only my human body, not the infinite God of all. Their work is in vain, their hopes are in vain, their learning is in vain, and their thoughts are in vain. And so they fall down, deep into the darkness of delusion and worldly attachment. But there are some great souls who know me. Their refuge is my own divine nature. They love me with a oneness of love, and they worship me as the one and the many seeing that in truth all resides in me. For I am the Father of the universe, and even the source of the Father. I am the Mother, the Creator, and the Sustainer of all. I am the highest to be known. I am the Way, the Master who watches in silence, thy friend, and thy shelter, and thy abode of peace. 
I'm the beginning, the middle, and the end of all things. Their seed of eternity, and their treasure supreme. There are men who know and love the gods, who are free from sin. They worship and pray for heaven, and they reach indeed the heaven of Indra, the king of the gods, and there they enjoy all royal pleasures. They enjoy the vast work of heaven, but the reward of their work comes to an end, and they return to the world of death. For they follow the words of the scriptures, yet lust for desires that pass away. And so in truth, they attain pleasures that pass away. But to those who adore me with a pure oneness of soul, to those who are ever in harmony, I increase what they have and give them what they have not. Even those who in faith worship other gods, because of their love they worship me. For he who offers me with devotion only a leaf, or a flower, or a fruit, or even a little water, this I accept from that yearning soul, because with a pure heart it was offered with love. Whatever you do, or eat, or offer in adoration, let it be an offering to me. And whatever you suffer, suffer it for me. Thus thou shalt be free from the bonds of karma. For even if the greatest sinner worships me with all his soul, he must be considered righteous. And he shall soon become pure and reach everlasting peace. For this is my word of promise, that he who loves me shall not perish. So give me thy mind, give me thy heart, surrender all to me, and thus with thy soul in harmony, and making me thy goal supreme, thou shalt in truth come to me. Here again, mighty Arjuna, the glory of my word. I speak for thy true good, because thy heart finds joy in me. He who knows I am beginningless, unborn, and the Lord of all the worlds, is free from all delusion and evil. Intelligence, spiritual vision, Victory over delusion, patience, forgiveness, truth, self-harmony, peacefulness, joys and sorrow, fear and freedom from fear, satisfaction, simple austerity, generosity, honor, and dishonor. These are the conditions of mortals, and they all arise from me. I am the source of all, 
The evolution of all comes from me. Knowing this, the wise worship me in adoration and love. And in mercy I dwell in their hearts and dispel the darkness of their ignorance by the light of the lamp of wisdom. Source of all beings, spoke Arjuna. Spirit divine eternal, God of gods, ruler of all. Forever in meditation, how shall I know thee? And in what manifest form shall I think of thee? Speak to me again of thy power and glory. For I am never tired, never of hearing thy words of life. Sri Krishna answered, Listen, and I shall reveal to thee some manifestations of my divine glory, for there is no end to my infinite greatness. I am the soul that dwells in the heart of all things. Among the sons of light, I am Sri Vishnu, and of luminaries the radiant sun. I am the lord of wind and storm, and I am the moon. Above man's senses, I am the mind, and in all living beings, I am the light of consciousness. I am the Lord of Destruction, the God of Wealth. Of radiant spirits, I am fire. Of lakes, I am the vast ocean. I am the tree of life. I am the Ankara of eternity. And I am silence. Of all warriors, I am Sri Rama. I am the innocence of a child. I am pure knowledge. I am the essence of the scriptures, and I am truth. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end of all things. I am time without end, and I am the all-seeing creator. I am death that carries away all things, and I am the source of all things to come. The beauty of the beautiful, the victory of the victorious, and I am Dharma in the hearts of the righteous. There is no end to my divine greatness, Arjuna. What I have spoken here to thee is only one small part of my greatness. But of what help is it to thee to know this diversity? Know that with one single fraction of my being, I pervade and support this universe. And know that I am.
And Arjuna replied, In thy mercy, thou hast told me the secret supreme of thy spirit, and thy words have dispelled my delusion. But my soul is yearning to see thy infinite form. Sri Krishna answered, By hundreds and by thousands, behold, Arjuna, my manifold celestial forms of innumerable shapes and colors. Behold the gods of the sun, of fire and of light, the gods of storm and lightning. See now the whole universe, and whatever thy soul may yearn to see, see it all as one in me. And I shall give thee divine sight to behold my wonder and glory. Then Sri Krishna revealed his supreme divine form, the Virata. And in that form, Arjuna saw countless visions of wonder. The whole universe in its infinite variety, standing in a vast unity in the body of the God of Gods. Arjuna bowed his head, and joining his hands in adoration, he thus spoke to his God. I see in thee all the gods, and the infinity of beings of thy creation. I see the creator Brahma on his throne of lotus, and all the seers and serpents of light. And all around I behold thy infinity, the power of thy innumerable arms, the visions from thy innumerable eyes, the words from thy innumerable mouths, and the fire of life of thy innumerable bodies. I see the splendor of an infinite beauty which illumines the whole universe. It is thee with thy crown and scepter and disc. How difficult thou art to see. But I see thee as fire, as the sun, blinding and incomprehensible. Thou art the imperishable, the highest end of knowledge, the support of this vast universe. Thou, the everlasting ruler of the law of righteousness, the spirit who is and was at the beginning. I see thee without beginning, middle or end. I behold thy infinite power, the power of thy innumerable arms. I see thine eyes as the sun and the moon, and I see thy face as the sacred fire that gives light and life to the whole universe in the splendor of a vast offering. Heaven and earth and all the infinite spaces are filled with thy spirit. And before the wonder of thy fearful majesty the three worlds tremble. The host of the gods come to thee and joining palms in awe and wonder they praise and adore thee. Sages and saints come to thee and praise thee with songs of glory. Sri Krishna then assumed his human form and with love in his eyes turned to his friend and said, Conquer thine enemies, Arjuna, win thy glory and enjoy thy kingdom. Be evermore one with me and arise, great warrior, Arise! When Arjuna heard Sri Krishna's words, 
he bowed in adoration and with a faltering voice said when i see thy gentle human face krishna my heart has peace 